President Muhammad Buhari has uh, assented to the Defense Research and Development Bureau Act 2022 passed by the National Assembly. We'll look at what this means for Nigeria's security. Stay with us for our conversation on this. And in sports, we'll look at how the Flying Eagles and Super Falcons are faring in their respective tournaments away from the country. And now the press will bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. All these and more ahead on The Breakfast. And we're back with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. As usual, we're ready to do justice to um, uh, two wonderful conversations, so two wonderful topics. And of course, uh, we have our guests uh, getting set to join us ahead of that. Uh, we also have in-depth analysis uh, of today's newspaper headlines, like we said. Uh, interesting to see what the papers are saying this morning. But before then, uh, I'll employ you to sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea or coffee, and have yourself a wonderful time uh, watching the program. Before we get into the papers, let's look at uh, the trending uh, stories uh, today um, or yesterday on social media. My name is Kofi Bartels, by the way, alongside Messi Bopo. Um, and this morning, we're doing justice to the program. The trending story is quite interesting. We know that it's not too new. You already know uh, that the President Muhammad Buhari addressed the country uh, yesterday, and he had some things to say um, about the situation uh, of the Central Bank of Nigeria's monetary policy that has seen um, Nigerians go through some difficult times, especially as it, it concerns accessing cash, cash, just money, cash. And, of course, the president is announcing that uh, the, um, the, old, the old 200 nanote will be allowed to circulate, will be allowed to be used uh, for the next 60 days whilst uh, the central bank tries to print more money and to get more Nigerians, uh, um, you know. So, um, um, you know, that is uh, what we have the first one. But Nigerians have been uh, reacting to this. The approval is not news. What is news is the reaction, and um, uh, of course, uh, some people have, um, uh, you know, praised the president, thanked him for coming to their rescue to say, you know, saying that this is um, uh, a brief, a breath of uh, f a sigh of relief uh, that we're breathing because yeah, it's been difficult for us. You know, some are asking, oh, if you could not make the new notes available, are we going to see the old 200 naira notes? You know, and then a lot more people are pointing to the uh, the the Supreme Court case. Um, they were adjourned until February 22. Uh, some are alleging the president is promoting uh, abuse of court, you know, disobedience to court orders. You know, disobedience to court orders. You know, so so these are some of the things people are, are talking about. You know, some someone saying that uh, individual words now bigger than the Supreme Court order. Uh, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, but some people, some legal practitioners, have been quick to point out that um, people need to go and read the the literature of uh, the last hearing, okay, where the Supreme Court declined to extend the ex parte uh, the the all done, motion applied. Uh, oh, this thing is kind of like very difficult for me, you know. But the uh, interim injunction, let's call it that, the order they made, you know, they uh, just told all parties to return to status quo ante. And some people would say that um, uh, it is open to interpretation, I think. I've had about two or three persons talk about this yesterday. So uh, let's see what happens. I think uh, we'll go to town to see uh, if people have access to this new, uh, this old 200 naira note. If, um, at all, it's making things easier. Um, will it fight money laundering? Will it uh, uh, make the Naira stronger, like the CBN wanted to, it to be done? If it won't make the Naira stronger, if it won't fight money laundering, uh, um, and then vote buying, which the president talked about, then why not just allow the old one be used, you know, the 1,000 Naira and 500 Naira notes as well, for the next 60 days, while you try to ensure adequate supply of the uh, the new Naira notes. But anyway, that's that. Uh, the reactions will continue to what the president said. And the conversations online and uh, offline will continue because this is still a hot topic. And trust us right here uh, on, on Plus TV Africa to bring you 
uh, the latest at that. Let's move on to another top trending uh, or another story on a top trending segment. Uh, marketers ignore federal government sell petrol at 205 naira per liter. Um, you know, even that 205 naira per liter is, uh, in some places, this is, is, is luxury. They wish they had that. So in some places, they're selling it for more uh, than 205 naira to the liter. And we've, we're told that some uh, petrol retailers, some petrol retailers um, are snubbing the directives. Directives. They have directives from the Minister of uh, State for Petroleum Resources, uh, Timmy Perez Silva, former governor of Bielsa State. Um, you know, that uh, premium motor spirit be sold at 184 naira per litre, and they're selling above this price. Um, uh, he, the May sales in, was in Lagos some time ago uh, because the president asked him to come around and uh, look at the situation of things on ground, you know, assess what uh, needs to be done in Lagos regarding distribution of uh, the uh, product that's premium motor spirit. And don't forget, the president had formed a committee chaired by him, Mr. President, and co-chaired by the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources. A lot of people in there, uh, but people pointed out that, some people pointed out that these guys, their day job, what they're paid to do is what the committee was set up to do. You know, that um, he, they just have to do their job and not uh, get an, a committee. You know, the Minister of State for Petroleum doesn't need to be in a committee to, that is to ensure, you know, uh, free flow of the product, PMS before he pays a visit to Lagos. But this is what we have. You know, so he was around. And um, we also have uh, the former DPR, which is a Nigerian midstream downstream uh, and downstream petroleum regulatory agency. It's now called NMDPRA. Um, it also being directed to scale up their regulatory activities uh, to ensure that uh, the uh, petrol retailers, okay, or you call them marketers, abide uh, by, by the current price regime. Um, also, I think the head of the NMDPRA is part of this new committee that was uh, a couple of weeks ago set up by Mr. President. But uh, the question remains, do they, do they need to uh, have a committee set up by the president to be able to do uh, their job? Because the day job of the NMDPRA, which was formerly the DPR, if it was um, split or bundled, we want to call it that, split into two, is they're meant to look at, um, to regulate the midstream and downstream uh, sectors of the petroleum industry, you know. So it involves uh, making sure that those who are selling petrol in the country, the various um, uh, independent and non-independent marketers abide by the rules, abide by the directives of government, abide by the laws, one of which is to sell at the regulated prices. So do they need another directive from maybe the president or from this committee to to do this? Do they need to scale up their, their monitoring? I mean, this is a, an emergency, emergency situation we've had, so they ordinarily should even scale it up because there's more work to be done. So, I mean, uh, I don't know. We just, um, I don't want to say some things on TV, but people who are meant to be doing their jobs are being put in committees to do the same job that they're they are appointed to do, elected to do, or paid to do, and then you're not telling them scale it up. It's just like the police. You know, during uh, maybe Salah or Easter or Christmas or New Year, they will say, oh, we are intensifying our, our deployment of our men around the country during this period. Why are you telling me? That is what you ordinarily should do. You know, you, you have to, at different times in the year, you look at what is needed. Um, then if you need more, you need to intensify. Do that. that is normal. You know, or maybe it's a strategy to get the criminals are scared to let them know that uh, ah, the police, they are, they are coming out. Oh, and most times they don't even do this intensification. You know, it's just uh, only intensifying or intensification on paper. You know, so anyway, having talked about these people who are meant to do their jobs, the fact is that people are, uh, some of these uh, petroleum marketers are selling the product above uh, the approved price. For me, you know, it's just a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, mis, mis, miscommunication, you know, uh, misdirection about this, this the administration. Um, is it about the Central Bank of Nigeria and its policies? Love somersaults. Is it about uh, uh, dirty fuel? We don't understand what's going on. Nobody's answering Nigerians, uh, explaining, telling them till today, they don't want to tell Nigerians what happened. 
and apologized, okay, properly, official properly. Um, what is what is the mode of determining the price of petrol in the country? What is what is the process? Agreed process. What are the calculations? What are the indices? Okay. What is the the structure? Um, because is it is it is it the NMDPRA? Because last time we're told by an Ipman official that the NMDPRA called them for a meeting and told them you have to sell at this new price now, which is higher than the, the, the previous price of petrol. Um, is it the, 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 the minister who says, okay, okay, today you guys have to sell at this price? Okay, this is based on what is what we want to know. You know, because if you say that these, um, uh, these uh, petrol marketers should sell uh, the product at 184 naira per litre, have you asked them where, where they're getting the product from? Have you asked them the ex depot price? Have you asked them about the landing cost, these calculations? I'm not saying the minister hasn't done that, of state, sorry, of state for petroleum resources, hasn't done that. But I'm saying that um, we need to, I, I, I would like to see a, uh, a, a definite way of, um, uh, what do you call it again, of calculating and of determining what the price should be. If the minister is the one who, when you know, he likes, I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong, but when he likes, he would say, okay, we should sell it at this price or that price. Let us know. If the president is the one who, when he likes, he says we sell it at this price or that price, let us know. You know, so we need, we need some consistency, is what I'm saying. Um, are we still going to be giving Nigerians the subsidy that they've been enjoying before now? Then people need to communicate to Nigerians to tell them, okay, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and, and this is what we'll be doing going forward, okay? You know, so we need more transparency, more explanations, um, so people can understand what's going on, okay? What's going on? I think that starts that. Uh, but the, the marketers always tell you that they are paying more. You know, they can't sell at a loss. You know, so what's going on? I remember we heard some time ago, subsidy was ended. There will be no longer subsidy in Nigeria. Then uh, we started hearing some other things. Oh, there will be subsidy. The uh, Senate president went to see the president and came back, addressed the press in Asso Rockville and said, oh, the president has not said there will be no subsidy. But the Minister of Finance said it, it will be removed. And then later, uh, NNPC took a bill to the president, said, okay, this is how much it will cost. He could bring you this money, who will, will, will subsidize the petrol, you know. And then we didn't know what I was. Now we're hearing, we're hearing that uh, the subsidy is going to be, uh, be removed halfway into the year. Okay, so... so it's a lot of, 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 of lack of clarity, you know, in all of this. And I think the, the authorities, the administration should make things a bit more clear. Let's know what's going on. Let's know what's happening, you know. Let's know. I mean, let's just know. <laughs> let's just know. We don't know a lot. Even me as a journalist, I'm confused. I'm confused, you know. I'm confused. All right, let's go to the last one. Um, this happens to be something from... Uh, uh, the the how do I put it now the proscribed indigenous group of Biafra okay uh, indigenous people of Biafra group uh, and of course um, some of the the infighting involving one of uh, their members a, a leader one of the leaders of the group by the name Simon Ekpa all right Simon Ekpa has been really really uh, pushing in recent times to be uh, has become recognized as. Uh, uh, Namdi Kanu is a protege, <coughs> excuse me, um, and of course he's been live streaming from Finland, you know, he's, he's not made a, a hidden where he is, you know, enjoying the freedom of, of Finland and uh, making sit at home orders from the comfort of uh, and the safety of where he is in Finland, um, giving orders and basically now that Namdi, Namdi Kanu has been in, in, in detention, I mean, he's emerged as somebody who can stand in that place. However, there's, there's, been, there's been conflicts, you know, uh, disagreements, and, um, you know, the Kano faction, the Kano block of uh, IPOB have said, see, this guy is not our man. You know, he has his own agenda. Um, but what is trending is that uh, the uh, Nigerian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you know, earlier in the week, I think this was on Tuesday, uh, summoned the Finnish ambassador to Nigeria, the ambassador of Finland uh, to Nigeria, uh, over threats by this man who is in Finland, 
live streaming from Finland, you know, making statements from there. Uh, threats that he made, Simon Ekpa, to stop the 2023 general elections in Nigeria's southeast. Okay, and um, uh, he's making this, this sit at home declarations over time. Like I said, the kind of faction they've said, see, this guy is not our man, don't listen to him, you know, but he's continuously made these uh, 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 sit at home orders across the southeast. You know, and now he's been insisting for some time that there will be no election in the southeast. In 2023, there will be no election in the Southeast in 2023. Okay, and um, this was the initial, said to be the initial stance of IPOB. I think maybe in recent times they've had to uh, think about changing that. They've not been talking about it as much anymore. But Simon Ekpa is the one who's continuously still been saying that. Okay, but IPOB seems to have changed their, their tune, you know, changed their tune a little bit. Um, so, what we're hearing is that um, the, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Yama, had a, a meeting with this Finnish ambassador to Nigeria, and um, he, was, he was saying, see, um, Mr. Ambassador, we're not happy, you know, over the, well, the thing that someone is doing. He's in your country, you know, enjoying the freedom in your country, the peace, and he's, um, you know, causing conflict in Nigeria's southeast, uh, making statements that are... Uh, you know, possibly going to disenfranchise voters in the southeast in the coming elections, saying that they are sit at home orders, that people are not going to vote and all that. Um, so, uh, the, what we hear is that the government of Nigeria is saying to the Finnish government that they won't take it lightly uh, with them. Finland, very beautiful country. Um, if they do nothing about Simon Ekpa's uh, threats that there will be no election in the southeast in 2023. Don't forget that um, one of the leading candidates for the 2023 elections is from the southeast. And imagine if you know there are unknown government everywhere, IPOB, maybe Eastern Security Network everywhere, and they say, "No, nah, if you come out, we're going to shoot you." And then the residents of the southeast do not uh, vote in 2023. Now we're asking who wins? Who wins? And all of this uh, is. Uh, Hey, it happens. Who, who wins? So the question remains for, for me, uh, um, what is Simon Ekpa's uh, end game? What is he driving at? What is he, um, uh, what do you call it again? What is he, he hoping to achieve? I mean, because even IPOB, the main guys that we're used to, people like Imar Powerful, they've changed their, their, uh, uh, their tune a little bit, and they've said, you know what, people can be allowed to vote and all. They've not been saying what they used to say before. But Simon, Simon, Simon has refused to change. <laughs> He's refused to change his tune. So it remains to be seen if what the Nigerian uh, authorities have said uh, will yield any result at the end of the day. At the end of the day. All right, 48 hours to reverse a sit-at-home order. Um, I don't know if that can happen. Simon is a, I think he's a lawyer, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I'm sure if he looks at the Finnish law, he'll be able to find somewhere where he say, hey, see, I'm exercising my fundamental right, okay, as a, a resident of Finland to uh, agitate for self-determination. Um, so it's, it's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. But let's see how uh, that plays out at the end of the day, you know. Some may say, oh, okay, this song that Simon is singing, who is playing the drum? <laughs> this tune, this tune he's, he's, he's singing, who is playing the drum? You know, um, it, it's quite easy to sit afar, okay, and then um, begin to make orders that would um, affect the security of a particular location. You know, what is, I would like to see people like Simon come back to the country, you know, go to the southeast, live there, okay, stay there, and um, fight, all right? Fight for self-determination. I mean, Mandela did it. Mandela went around the world, you know, went around Africa, even came to Nigeria, uh, uh, where the late chief in Basilica, Amici, hid him for a while and all that. But he went back to, to South Africa and said, even if it cost me my life, I'm here. You know, he was put in prison for many years. But what happened? He still made that long walk to freedom. It was a long walk. You know, so maybe Simon Ekpa and his, his, his likes, can, they can you know, come back home, be here. Okay, and, and, and the struggle will be 
uh, enhanced. And then maybe when he begins to see that on the ground the people want to go to work on Monday, they want to vote, they will put pressure on him. You know, but it's so easy to sit afar and, uh, and give these orders. Anyway, kudos to the Nigerian government, uh, kudos to uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, for summoning the Finnish ambassador. She have done this a long time ago. Let's see if it will yield any results. My name is Kofi Bartels. Uh, we'll be back after this break to look at what the papers are saying this morning. Thanks for staying with us on our top trending segment. Stay.